The sea is rising. From Southbridge to Seaford, Bowers Beach to South Bethany, there is now often salt water where there was not salt water before. Higher tides and more frequent dramatic weather events are beginning to reshape Delaware, affecting how we live. Our climate is changing, and while the reasons for this may be debated, planning for this new reality just makes good sense and has been underway for some time. Our secretary of the Department of Natural Resources and staff from here, the Delaware Coastal Programs, wanted to proactively address sea level rise in the state of Delaware. Because it can be such a divisive issue, we knew that we needed to have a number of different types of people, a lot of different interests sitting and thinking about what sea level rise was going to mean to the state of Delaware. So we developed the Sea Level Rise Advisory Committee. The committee, which included local, county, and state government representatives, business leaders, and environmental groups, met for the last three years and developed a set of recommendations that will improve our ability to respond and adapt to the threats of sea level rise. Sea level rise will have an impact on things like your home and your business and roadways and wastewater treatment facilities. It'll have an impact on natural resources where wildlife can go. And all of those things have a huge impact on Delaware's economy, the way that we live our lives, the quality of our lives. And the, the resource impacts from sea level rise differ between each of Delaware's three counties fairly significantly, which is very interesting. Newcastle, Kent, and Sussex each face a unique set of challenges brought on by the rising waters. Some have been analyzed and are now being addressed. Residents, businesses, nonprofits, and government are planning and implementing short and long-term responses that are as unique as the challenges each of their respective communities face. On Milford Neck in Kent County, fourth-generation farmers like Frank Webb are intimately aware of the threat of sea level rise. All of this was planted and the, the crop emerged and actually was here several months ago and this salt concentration has just over the last two, two and a half months you can see is, is killing the corn. Meanwhile, on the adjoining property, Pete Martin and Kate Hackett of Delaware Wildlands, a nonprofit land conservation organization, have been monitoring the changes in the trees and vegetation on Wildlands properties. I came here to this site in 1987. This was all lush green forest. And what we initially saw or witnessed would be nor'easter and storm-driven tides. But now it's not just storm-driven tides, it's just tides in general. The rising tide means that Delaware wildlands must respond by managing their holdings very differently in the future. Things that we would have done in 1987, we wouldn't consider doing now. Uh, we wouldn't consider trying to plant trees here anymore. It's salt water. Our primary strategy is for acquisition of property. So as we see the marsh and the wetlands and the forest rolling back with sea level rise in this transition P was talking about, our, our challenge then is to roll back acquisition behind what we already own and allow that adaptation of habitat to happen. While Delaware Wildlands is responding with land acquisition and adaptation, Southbridge, a Wilmington neighborhood along the Christina River in Newcastle County, is responding to the rising water differently. The community doesn't know whether it is sea water rising or whether it is from storms or what. All we know is that we are inundated with water every time it rains. In the short term, Southbridge is working with planners, engineers, and scientists to design a stormwater management system that will use an adjoining wetland to relieve their frequent flooding problems. But the community is also engaging residents, gathering data to plan their long-term response to the rising water. Sea level rise will be a potential threat 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. We don't know how much of an impact it will be to the community, but we're trying to be proactive and preparing. So we're just doing our homework so that we make intelligent decisions as what we should do to make sure that this community continues to have a good quality of life. A similar effort is underway a short distance downriver in Delaware City. In a series of public workshops, town leaders are learning how challenging it is to build community concern about such a long-term threat. Part of our goals 
uh, as a result of this workshop is, uh, is to educate the people. And so that's a big challenge for us right now. Folks are, are used to preparing for these natural hazards because they've seen them occur and they know they're likely to occur in the future. However, with the increased threat of uh, climate change and accelerated sea level rise, these natural hazard impacts can be exacerbated. So we've had some, a couple of evacuations in the past uh, year or so, which, and I've lived there all my life, I never remember having evacuations because of storms coming in, so that was a pretty scary thing. So it's critical to prepare for future flood risk and not just uh, prepare for historic flood risk. So we had this whole list of workshops. Like Southbridge, Delaware City is now doing its homework to better understand both the threat and possible community response to the rising waters. We're moving to the planning stage where we actually start looking at uh, more from an engineering standpoint uh, what some of these challenges are and what's causing this flooding. But sea level rise is threatening more than towns along the river. A number of dikes built by early Dutch settlers for a different purpose are now also at risk. The uh, purpose of the dikes have changed over the other centuries uh, from being purely for agriculture initially to now being uh, to protect infrastructure that's developed behind the dikes as a result of, of the draining and that need to protect them from flooding. Responding to the rising water, the Newcastle County Conservation District and Denrec are repairing and raising four dikes, beginning with the one at Red Lion Marsh. Once the dikes have been repaired to these new, new elevations that, that have been determined for sea level rise, they will have a lot more capacity, and the faster we can get the, these repairs in, the sooner they, they'll have that added protection and infrastructure integrity to sustain these future events. Finally, in Sussex County, coastal communities are developing innovative solutions to respond to sea level rise, such as the one implemented in Dewey Beach. All of our bayfront is very low, from 0.6 to 1.5 feet above sea level. And what we did to curb the drastic flooding that occurred on a regular basis here, we raised the road, we put in large elliptical pipes, we built a, a natural berm. The berm stopped the bayfront flooding, and the pipes now carry the town's stormwater into a huge underground vault. From there, it is pumped into a marsh that filters the runoff before it reaches Rehoboth Bay. It's healthy. There is sea life in the channels. The Department of Natural Resources has blessed the project as what they would like to see in, in all of our coastal towns for uh, filtrated discharge of stormwater. And fortunately, this system has been tested for three years now, and it has proved 100% effective. Further down the coast, residents of another community are very aware of the risks the rising tides pose to their homes and lifestyle. South Bethany is a community of about 1,300 houses. Probably 80% of them are located on these canals. Normal tide here is around one foot. And so everybody here is concerned that sea level rise could affect them seriously. The town has formed a sea level rise committee, which is looking for ways to adapt to the recognized threat. We're looking at our building codes to see whether we should make changes to them. We're looking at whether we need to increase bulkhead heights so that we keep the water out, whether we need to increase road heights. Like other communities around the state, South Bethany is working with Delaware Coastal Programs, a section of state government that provides technical assistance and funding for projects related to sea level rise and coastal resiliency. But many nonprofit groups are also committed to tackling this issue. The Center for the Inland Bays recently began using an innovative approach to save drowning wetlands, finding a new use for sediment dredged from bay navigation channels. When creeks were dredged in the inland bays, that material went to upland disposal facilities. And now we're, we're promoting the use of that material to restore marshes. So we have a project that we're working on in Pepper Creek. We dredged silt out of the channel and then sprayed it onto the marsh. And that kind of builds that marsh up so then it can start performing better. The plants can grow better and keep pace of sea level rise. Another effort being promoted by the center and other environmental organizations is the Living Shorelines Initiative. A lot of times farmers have corners of their fields that have gone fallow from saltwater intrusion. These are great areas to target for just letting natural vegetation come back. These are where the wetlands want to migrate. And that's where also the Living Shoreline Initiative comes into play. Building shorelines that can adapt to that rising sea level and kind of go into that continuum of how wetlands want to migrate inland. Uh, 
Throughout Delaware, communities, government, and environmental organizations are developing and implementing unique solutions to sea level rise threats. Yet each of these efforts are built upon a common foundation, community awareness and education. At the DuPont Environmental Education Center, the Delaware Nature Society offers lessons in climate change and the impact of sea level rise on Wilmington's urban landscape. Students learn in several ways, with hands-on projects designed to connect them to the local habitat, as well as more traditional instruction. Okay, so what happens now if we go from two feet to three feet? We have students studying how an increase in greenhouse gases raises the temperature of an environment through a scientific experiment. So we're looking at a global perspective. Then we zoom into the city of Wilmington and look at projection maps that University of Delaware created um, that show what's going to happen in Wilmington if there's sea level rise one through four feet. And then we talk about our personal ecological footprint and talk to students about what they can do on a daily basis to help reduce their ecological footprint on the planet. Reducing one's ecological footprint can start at home by saving energy, recycling more, and driving less. It can be as simple and fun as constructing a rain garden to reduce local flooding or planting native species to reestablish shrinking habitat for wildlife. Certainly, Delaware government will continue monitoring, studying, and responding to sea level rise, while concerned groups will keep educating, organizing, and taking action. But ultimately, each of us must get involved. Acknowledging the rising sea, its growing effect on our landscape and lives, and take informed action that will stem this challenge for our generation and those to come.